One of the biggest questions approaching this offseason is going to be what do the Buccaneers do with Baker Mayfield? So I wanted to pick out three plays like I usually do and dive into the film and see what his tape is talking about. Last year, Baker Mayfield signed a one-year, $4 million deal with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, which ranked 49th in terms of the highest cap hit of all the quarterbacks in 2023. But then what did Baker do? He had career highs in yards, touchdowns, and completion percentage for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers offense. Now, if the Bucs do re-sign him, some people in the smart football conversation world think that his deal could be in the neighborhood of three years and $105 million. And Derek Clawson from 33rd Team did a deep dive breakdown for the pre-free agency list and when he got to the quarterbacks he had Baker Mayfield ranked 20th on that list but Baker finished top 10 in most of the relevant statistical categories in the NFL last year so why do we keep doubting Baker Mayfield all right let's dive into the tape taking on Chicago Bears week two early in the season before anybody really saw Baker come in this is a naked so what we're gonna get here is we're gonna get this little sit hitch this is interesting usually this is a sail route to the sideline but that's not what I think it's Godwin's doing. He's actually kind of running um, almost like a slot comeback. I don't know. And then we've got a naked where he's coming on the over route, but he's also kind of like throttling down in this hole. Baker's going to get here and roll left. Okay, so right-handed quarterback, rolling left, high degree of difficulty. I don't, I don't know what they're trying to do on this concept. I don't love it because if you look right here, I mean, Baker can't go to Godwin. He's got this linebacker floating. And you go, yeah, well, he's open until he reads the eyes and comes underneath it and takes it the other way. If you look up top, I mean, that guy's obviously covered. So we can't throw the ball to Mike Evans on this play. Well, let's see what Baker Mayfield does. Once Baker gets his eyes around, feels the front side pressure, sets up for a second, goes, oh, man, there is nobody open. And then what he does at this point is he takes all of the high-level football information out, he dumps that out of his head, and he gets back to backyard football, something he's been doing at a high level for a long time, and he actually goes, well, wait a second, that guy's covered unless he runs this way, and I am staring right here, and I get that defender to settle his feet, and Mike Evans go upfield, throw him a ball that only Mike can catch, no risk, this ball's not getting tipped, it's not getting picked, and Mike's able to actually catch it and get upfield and make himself a little play. But again, look from behind at what Baker Mayfield sees. Okay, coming out naked. I mean, nobody's open. So that little pump fake, wait, wait, wait. And by the way, this is a highly contested throw. He barely gets this ball off before that guy gets his hand on it. And that's a great ball. There, Mike does the rest. Speaking of free agency. This guy's going to be talked about this whole offseason. And so Baker Mayfield, run around, draw it up in the dirt, make a play, one for one. All right, next play. This is the Saints. This is third and goal. They're up big in this game, but it's a divisional game. They're playing until the end. And this play is all sorts of messed up. So check this out. We're going to get this tight end to chip and go to the flat. We're hoping for number 10 to get all the way across. We're hoping really what we're trying to get is he's going to chip. This tight end's going to chip and go on the flat. I need him back corner. I need him back corner. Okay, so let's see how they get there. And then I'm not really sure what this guy's doing, but I think he's spotting up. And then I'm going to get the back right here. And I, look, you're sitting here going like, dude, you got like red lines drawn all over the place. Yeah, that's when I hit pause. How much harder is it to see when you're standing back there with the ball in your hand and Cam Jordan and all these other dudes coming at you? So this play is all jacked up. Okay? You'd love to sit here and go 10, get open. Well, he kind of runs into it. It's, it's incidental contact, but he's running in to this guy who's chipping on him. Look at his two crossing routes, this guy runs into him, this guy runs into him. So you're kind of just dead where you're standing. It's third down. Nobody's open. So Baker starts right, okay? Eyes are right. Then comes back and goes, never mind. Eyes are left. Then comes back and goes, uh, uh, never mind. Rolls right. And watch when his hands come apart. He's going to throw this ball. I don't know who 83 is. He's going to throw this ball to that guy. But look when Baker's hands come apart. And if you watch my videos, you hear me say, here's what he sees, okay? Baker's hands come apart. When you go to throw off platform, I'm not saying that he started throwing right here. I'm saying he made the decision to throw really right here. So if that's the case, this is what he sees. And look at what he's able to do. Right foot on the ground, fading away. All his energy right now is going this way. And he's able to get this thing across his body, throw this guy open to a spot, Ball is not in harm's way. This is not almost picked. Okay, we go. Oh, that's a great diving catch. No, that's a freaking dime, is what that is. So again, Baker 
Starting to the right. Nope. Goes back left. Nope. Doesn't panic. He's moving. Look at him. It's great protection, but he's also creating time and space. So right here, this is what he sees. This next foot that's hitting the ground is throwing him open. Plus or nobody, only guy who can get that is his guy. Two for two in terms of, hey, bake, run around and make a play. All right, now we're at Lambeau. This is third down as well. This is not run around, make a play. This is just throw the ball with timing and accuracy on time. Let your guy make a play after he catches this ball. So we're going to bring Mike Evans across in motion. Defense is going to balance up. We're going to have him run a spray release out route. We're going to have really like a flood concept there with a, a spray release out in a high angle corner. And then we're just going to run a little choice route in here. But look at the timing of this. 19 turns around. He knows that linebacker's coming. This ball is ripped. Only place this guy can get it. And puts him in a position to make a play after the catch. That when you draw these things up, every time it looks like it's a touchdown. So here's Baker again. Interesting footwork, I will say. Puts himself in a position where that's hard to do. And that loses stability here at the top. Sorry, I can't help myself. Okay. But gets able to recover and puts this thing right there where only his guy can get it. And this is kind of what we saw play Green Bay all year. That's essentially four missed tackles, the way I'd look at it, in a huge game. So we've seen Baker run around and make plays. We've seen him push the ball down the field. But I also just want to highlight the fact that this dude can throw on time with accuracy and put the ball exactly where he intended, which is why we saw career highs in yards, touchdowns, and completion percentage this year. Now, just some stats. Baker Mayfield, first off, the Bucks. I mean, you can say... We'll go into the personal stats, but the Bucks won the AFC South. They were 10 and 9 on the season because of the playoffs. Um, they lost to the Lions in the divisional round. Lions were damn good this year. And they beat the Eagles in the wild card round. Baker Mayfield, 4,700 yards, 64% completion percentage, 34 touchdowns, 12 picks, 94.6 rating. And let's put this in context. Tom Brady's last season in Tampa, 5,000 yards, 65%, 27 touchdowns, 7 less, and 10 interceptions and a 90.7 rating. So to put this into context here, not comparing Baker Mayfield to Tom Brady, but I am comparing their last two years as the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and a lot can be said about how well Baker played. And then the winning. I mean, they averaged, as an offense, 326 yards per game. They only ran 88 yards per game. They threw for 225, and they scored 20 and a half points a game. Top 10. He was top 10 in a bunch of stuff. Seventh in attempts, seventh in touchdowns, seventh in ADOT, eighth in first downs, ninth in yards. So as you go through Baker's year, you might not have been watching it in real time unless you're a Bucks fan, but when you look at the accumulation of what he was able to do year one in a system when he was basically in the offseason was competing for the job, the offseason was not built around him. I think it was super impressive. And we've seen Baker have some high highs and some low lows, but the reality is these last couple of years, he's been put in really difficult situations. I thought he's played really well. He's had an incredible moments like the Rams game on Thursday Night Football we all saw where he signed like 45 minutes for the game and balled out. But now we've seen him put an entire season together and he's still young, healthy, and a former number one overall pick and a Heisman Trophy winner. So I'm excited to see what the Bucks do. And if they don't go all in and move forward with Baker Mayfield, what team does move forward? Because I believe that he has played well enough for somebody to go ahead and push all the chips in the middle and say, we can win with this guy. The Bucks did last year.